Twitter stock, the Galaxy S6, and how to bootleg movies. I'm John P, and today's Geek Beat is all over the board. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Domain.com. If you don't normally pay attention to finance news, the NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and S&P 500 are all at or near their historical all-time highs. Although, it's a pretty different story for each of them. The NASDAQ, for example, has yet to actually reach its all-time high set back in 2000, while the Dow Jones and S&P are up around 33% from their 2000 highs. But in the tech world, Apple and Google are a whole different story. For example, if you invested in Apple in 2000, you would have bought in somewhere between $3 and $20 price range. Today, that stock is selling for nearly $130, meaning worst case, you'd have a 650% return on your investment. And while Google doesn't actually go back to 2000, if you picked it up near the launch in 2005, you'd have bought in around 50 bucks to a stock now trading around $575 for a whopping 1100% return on investment. Of course, for every winner, there are losers. Microsoft, for example, still hasn't quite recovered to its high in 2000, which makes sense in hindsight, seeing how its two biggest competitors have been crushing it for 15 years. And Yahoo, which seemed to have everything going for it in the early days, is now sitting at less than half of its former glory from 2000. If you're wondering why we're taking a walk down memory lane here in the financial world, it's because while I was traveling, someone pointed out to me that a little over one year in, Twitter stock seems to be lingering at just a little more than it IPO'd for. And they compared that to Facebook, which stagnated for about the same time before tripling in price. They wanted to know if I thought it was a good time to buy Twitter. So I'll tell you what I told him. I have no idea. But <laughs> here are a few things to consider. 15 years ago, Yahoo had a business model based on taking advantage of the eyeballs that they had coming to their site. The proposition was simple, pay money to have your listing at the top of the page. But Google came along with a disruptive search technology and promised far more and more relevant content. What happened next was classic. For four years, Google's stock shot up 500% while Yahoo's plummeted 50%. Sucks to be Yahoo, doesn't it? Well, actually, no, because over the last year, while Google stock has remained flat, Yahoo is up by 20 to 40%. Of course, over the last quarter, while Google stock was up 5%, Yahoo dropped by 25%. But why? Why did all of this happen? Well, there are a thousand reasons, but it doesn't matter. The bottom line is that investing in stock is a game of timing. Everyone's gonna lose and everyone's gonna win, but deciding when to buy and sell is a lot harder than it seems. And getting back to the original question about whether it's a good time to buy Twitter or not, the answer is sure, if you intend to hold it for a while. And as long as you own plenty of other non-correlated investments like maybe a website of your own. You know, how any individual stock is doing has no bearing on what you build yourself. So head over to domain.com and use coupon code GEEKBEAT to get 20% off both your domain and some hosting to go along with it. Since having your own domain means you control your own destiny, investing in your own site is gonna let you build something that can improve your net worth by helping you develop an audience, making you a little cash from advertisers, or maybe even just helping you land a better paying job. And saving 20% by using coupon code GEEKBEAT at domain.com is fiscally responsible. I'm John P, and I approve of this message. Enough talk about stocks and finances, it makes my head hurt. By the way, if you didn't see it, yesterday was a big Apple announcement, and Apple stock is actually down a little compared to last week, whereas Samsung stock went up after Mobile World Congress when they announced the new S6. Of course, I was there along with Amber Mack and Colin Furs helping launch the new S6 with our live talk show after the unpacked event in Barcelona. And if you didn't get to see it, we've got a link in today's show's notes at geekbeat.tv forward slash 1020. My favorite thing about the new phone was actually the camera. And I got to carry one around for about a week shooting all kinds of ridiculous stuff.
Now the Note 4 has a great camera, but the S6 is even better, especially the front facing camera, which now has an f1.9 lens and a five megapixel sensor, not to mention real time HDR. Selfies are absolutely amazing. The new camera incorporates a pro mode, which lets you control some of the camera's functions. Not nearly as much as a DSLR, but I was able to lower the shutter speed for this nighttime tracking shot of a scooter, which puts the background in motion while the subject is in focus. Low light performance is also very, very good, and the improved HDR functionality, along with much improved speed with both the startup time and the time between picks, makes this the best phone camera I've ever played with. Oh, and the phone is nice too. Finally today, I've had several people ask me how to become a criminal. You wanted to know what the best way to steal movies is that you should be paying for. And you know it, you dirty little rats, you. Well, according to Netflix, the bootlegging software known as Popcorn Time has popped up as one of their biggest competitors. It's an app that basically gives BitTorrent a graphical user interface with movie thumbnails, descriptions, IMDB ratings, previews, and a choice of resolutions. The, <laughs> the thing that's got to be driving the MPAA and RIAA insane is that Popcorn Time, which can be found at popcorntime.io, makes bootlegging movies and music so simple your mom could do it. And so many people are using it that your mom is probably one of them. Flickstore is another alternative to Popcorn Time, although a little quirkier. Interestingly, it incorporates a buy link so that if your conscience gets the better of you, you can pop over to Google and search out a legal copy. And then there's Isoplex. It's a derivative of Popcorn Time, only without the ability to easily save the movies it's downloading. Some people think that not saving the movies makes it somehow legal. Finally, if you have Kodi, the open source home theater software formerly known as XBMC, you can install an add-on called Genesis, which includes something formerly called Go Movie, which essentially gives you popcorn time on steroids built right into your media player. It lets you look up just about any movie you can think of and find multiple versions to stream. In essence, it allows you to turn your whole family into a bunch of pirates. Well, that's it for today's show. Sorry it was so long, but since I haven't been around for a couple of weeks, I wanna make sure you got your money's worth, even though the show's free. But of course, you can go to geekme.tv forward slash patrons and pledge a little coin to help support our efforts. God knows we need all the help we can get. I'm John P. I'll see you next time.